Good morning, it's me, Bad Baby, and welcome to Minecraft 1.21. I can't believe it's that time of the year already. Now, this week is coming up, and Minecraft 1.21 development for the year has wrapped up. From tough bricks to a brand new beautiful structure, there's a lot in 1.21. Down below, you let me know what's your favorite feature in the update so far. While you're headed out there, do me a quick huge favor and tap that like button, subscribe if you're new, and let's do this. No pun intended, but we'll start in a tough spot with Minecraft to tough. It's valid here because at long last, Minecraft has added a tough block to Minecraft the Bedrock Edition. <clears throat> okay, what I actually meant to say is tough staircases, tough slabs, and tough walls. They're finally making it to the game. I have no clue how I messed that one up. Crafted just like how you would craft any other staircase slab or wall variant, you could use a stone cutter or you could use the crafting table. And speaking of crafting, if we take tough and slide it into a crafting grid, two by two, we get Polish tough. Polish tough is a brand new, brand new newest toughest Polish block in the entire game. Just like with the OG version of tough, we also are going to look at Polish tough staircases, slabs, and walls as well. It's got me wondering, what about Polish andesite wall, Polish granite wall, or heck? Give it a diorite one, too. Another absolutely stunning tough block that we can craft is the chiseled tough block. Look at this thing. This hints at the mod that this thing is, like, kind of directly related, based around. The top of it has this cool little swirl. The bottom of it, same swirl. It's pretty nice. The side of it, you got, like, a breeze, a wind thing going on. Wait, hold up, hold up. Did somebody say breeze? All right, more on that in a minute, because next up, we have Minecraft's new, maybe, perhaps, possibly, most beautiful brick. I mean, you let me know how you feel on this one, but I don't know. That's a clean looking texture. We also, of course, have brick staircases, brick slabs, and brick walls as well. The sounds for these blocks? That's a chef's kiss of a sound right there. It's beautiful. Last but not least here for the Tough family, we've got chiseled to tough bricks. The top of it, I can't help but think I have like a brand new ore block, almost like a diamond block or something. Every single time I see this top texture, it's clean. The bottom side, same exact thing. All the other sides is this cool, like, squiggle thing. One of the things that I'm most excited for when it comes to all of these new tough blocks is how amazing it's going to be to get to build with these things. Like, for example, we could combine these two and, like, they just flow together seamlessly. It looks really, really good. Alternatively, you could do, like, I don't know, bricks and the squiggle, and, like, the bricks right there, they're, like, the same bricks, so it kind of works out nicely. Maybe mix a couple breeze blocks in there, and again, because of that whole squiggle thing going on, like, it looks good. This is one of the most versatile building block sets of all time. Coming to the game in not too long. It looks so good. Deo, but this block, that block right there is the brand new chiseled tough block. And that hints at the very next feature I'd like to dive into. This feature, no, oh, it's a dangerous one. It's a bad one. But at the same time, it's kind of beautiful. We got a brand new mob. The first of two known ones right now. Of course, for this one, I could be talking about none other than the brand new beautiful looking Breeze Mob. Look at those eyebrows, the yellow eyes. That's a liver condition for sure. Look at that thing. Ah, that looks absolutely amazing. The whole tornado thing, the rods floating around, kind of relating to a different mob. We'll talk about it in a minute, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The texture of this mob, even the bottom of the head, you're never going to see that thing, but it all just looks so good. The Breeze is Minecraft's newest elemental bad boy. Now, if I miss uh, saying it somehow already, uh, the breeze is a bad mob. It does not like you. It attacks with like a, a range attack called a wind charge. That's a new thing added in this update. The breeze also jumps around and kind of like sprints around too from time to time. If you can hit the breeze ball just right, like that right there, kind of like with a gas fireball, you can actually send the thing back at the breeze. One of the big things when it comes to combat with the breeze is the whole wind knockback thing. If the breeze ball hits something near you, but not you, you just get like knockback, you get pushed around. If it hits you on the other hand, it'll deal you a little bit of damage. Crazy thing about the breeze is it likes range, but it doesn't matter because of the wind around it. It's kind of protected from arrows, basically. The only way to hurt this thing with like range is time it perfectly and hit it with one of its own balls. Now, right now, the breeze, it actually doesn't have very much health at all. And actually, unfortunately, when you do take this thing out, it doesn't have a drop either. Just like with the rest of 1.21, we'll definitely end up seeing more of this guy and more to it a little bit later on. So, so far in Minecraft 1.21, even though it wasn't built as an update for builders, oh boy, this update really is kind of a whole like aesthetic building update. We got a lot of new tough blocks, but also we've got a whole ton of brand new copper blocks too. And some of them are some of the most beautiful things in the entire game. We'll kick things off nice and simply with the brand new chiseled copper block. 
Now remember that for all these copper blocks, you're gonna come with a, a non-wax version and a wax version. There is absolutely no texture difference though between the wax and the unwax version. It's just the unwax doesn't oxidize like the rest of normal plain old copper. Now chiseled copper, it's just like with the rest of the copper things, or at least some of them that we're gonna talk about today, you can craft them inside of a stone cutter. When you put one solid copper block in here, it cuts down to four. Kind of just like how it does with cut copper, it's kind of beautiful. The chiseled copper block has kind of got this wheel thing going on, and that's basically it. It's like a decorational copper block. Now, some of these things, like the breeze, or this next block that we're going to talk about, they have a lot of depth. If you'd like a more in-depth guide on any of the 1.21 features we're talking about today, call it. Request it down below. Anyways, the copper grate block. <laughs> the copper grate block. No pun intended. Maybe pun intended. This block is a great-looking block. Now, just like with chiseled copper we talked about a second ago, the copper grape block cuts into four versions of it when you make it in the stone gutter. It's amazing. This makes it really, really nice and, like, pretty affordable for building. Speaking of building, first and foremost, the copper grape, this beautiful beauty, and the wax oxidized versions of it is probably mainly for building, but it does have some other cool properties we'll talk about, too. A great way to think of this new copper grape block is sort of like the glass for copper. When you place this thing down, you can see through it. The inside texture is kind of connect there, and it looks really, really good. Make a nice solid window out of that or something. However, here's the thing. Unlike glass, the copper grape block, it kind of has a little bit more to it. When it comes to waterlogging, because after all, this block does appear to have an inside. Oh, absolutely. 100% you can waterlog this block. Kind of even more cool when you waterlog this thing, the water is contained within itself, at least on Minecraft Java. If the thing is fully submerged underwater, the water fills in all the way when you waterlog it. Another nice thing about the copper gray block, you notice what's going on here, or should I say maybe down below the copper gray blocks? Aha, yes, the light's light all the way through the block, and actually, it's a non-spawnable block as well. Next time you're trying to build a mob farm with like maybe a mob perimeter, no spawning blocks, consider copper grates. Not only do they look great, but <laughs> that's the end of my choke. Please laugh. <laughs> and finally, last but not least for the copper grape block, at least for today, check this thing out. If I put a mob inside of it, it will never suffocate the mob as well. So like, uh, that's one of the one of the things of all time when it comes to this block. I like to jump around a little bit though, real quick. And next up, take a look at the copper doors. Listen to these things. Beautiful sounding and beautiful looking as well. The copper door is a brand new door coming to the game in this update. And you don't want to know how we craft it. The copper trap door, listen. Oh, it's beautiful sounding. The copper trap door is another block coming to the game as well. Look at this. Maybe you want the copper block to be a little bit taller. Nice, perfect little build hack, build trick right there. The copper door also kind of had this whole wheel situation going on, which is pretty wild and crazy. This is a beautiful trap door. It's going to look so good. Next up, oh boy, we got a big one. Even though it's currently in the midst of a giant controversy in the Minecraft community, the Copper Bulb is a beautiful brand new block that has kind of like 16 different versions of it. Or maybe 32 if you want to count the waxed and unwaxed as well. So as you probably notice here with the Copper Bulb, we've got an unlit state and a lit state. When I go into a crafting table with these ingredients right there, you will craft a four Copper Bulbs. It's not made in the stone cutter. When you place this thing down, by default, it will be unwaxed and it will be off. Instead, if we want to do a little bit more with this thing, we're going to have to get a little bit of power involved. Check this out. Redstone wire with a lever. I go ahead and turn it on. Now the bulb is on and there's a redstone dot in the middle. And then I go ahead and say, take the lever away. No more redstone power. The bulb stays on, but there's no red dot in the middle. After that, let's say I yeah, change my mind. I put the lever back. I go ahead and pulse it again. Red bulb in the middle. Power is off. I go ahead and do it one more time. Take the power from the lever away. And now we're right back to that original state. The copper bulb is kind of like a, it remembers the redstone pulse and keeps it. The power will stay on, even if you take the active power source away. Another kind of neat thing about the copper bulb is how it takes and handles power. If I have a lever in the middle, I will only power that one. Meanwhile, the other lamp in the game, it'll power all of those adjacent blocks as well. Another cool thing is the amount of light that this thing gives off. Look at this. In the middle of the night right here, we can see the fully oxidized copper bulb is very, very dim. The less oxidization this block has experienced, the brighter it's going to be. The brightest version of copper bulb is all the way up at 15. The dimmest, it's down at 4. This one is 8, and that's 12. If you're a stoner, the copper bulb is going to be one of those features that's crazy useful to you in the next update. But where do we find this thing? Haha. Armadillo. 
Now, the armadillo isn't where you actually find the copper bowl, believe it or not. I just needed to remember to put the armadillo in the video and the armadillo scoot as well. I just, uh, I didn't have a better spot for it. So, we'll talk about it right now real quick. The only 1.21 feature that we currently know about but do not have in-game is going to be the armadillo. The armadillo was Minecraft 2023 mob boat winner. The armadillo, when added to the game, will drop armadillo scoot. We can make that scoot to make a dog armor, a fursuit, that will be added to the game in Minecraft 1.21 as well. But, like I said, it's announced, but it's not here yet, so... Yeah, I figured I'd throw it in the video. Anyways, copper bow. If you're looking to get your hands on, or at least eyes on the copper bulb, then maybe your best bet in 1.21 is slide over to the brand new giant underground structure known as the Trial Chambers. This is going to be a structure built out of all of those top blocks we talked about, all of the copper blocks we took a look at as well, as well as some pre-existing ones as well. The Trial Chambers is a brand new chamber where you will do a little bit of trialing. This is also, I completely skipped over it, but the home of the Breeze mob as well. The only place you're going to be able to find the Breeze in the game, at least right now, is going to be inside of one of these Trial Chambers chambers. When it comes to this structure, oh boy, there's so much on it. I still have to do my in-depth guide on it, but I've already made a couple different videos on it. If you want to know more about it, definitely check those out. Anyways, though, this thing, it has so many different rooms. It's procedurally generated, and I swear, to this day, it was added like a month ago now into the game, and I've checked it out a lot, but I'm still finding new rooms. I don't think I've ever seen this room, for example. It's so cool. Inside of the structure, you're going to be able to find some not-so-great loot right now, including sometimes loot inside of these pots as well. It's pretty cool. In the devs' own words themselves, the structure is currently unfinished. They are working on it. They're going to make it, like, uh, nice and finished by the time it's, uh... Well, by the time it's nice and finished. The structure is so cool. It's procedurally generated and it's randomized and everything like that, which means basically every single time you find this structure, it's gonna be laid out completely differently. To make it even better, the structure isn't like an ancient city or something like that that's insanely rare. You should be able to find the trial chambers like relatively commonly under the ground. Another pretty low-key fire thing about this structure is when it intersects with a cave, look at this. You kind of get like a, you know, of course, like a big cave, but like a whole city thing going on as well. It's so cool looking. This thing was described as like the upgrade to dungeons, but to me, this is more like the upgrade to strongholds. Inside of the trial chambers, you'll find these things called trial spawners. And the trial spawners, when you get close enough, they activate and basically spawn in some bad mobs. There are a lot of different bad mobs. This is like the most dangerous one. Terrible situation to be in without armor. Uh, there, there's a lot of different bad mobs that can like pop up inside of these structures. Also on the walls, I don't know if you can see it over there. Or saw it over there. Dispensers. This thing is laced with traps all over the place, but at the same time, it's also laced and rigged with treasure as well. It definitely feels like a lot of other aspects about this thing is unfinished currently as well. For example, the breeze mob and this weird poison skeleton thing too. There's a whole lot to the trial chambers. I could talk about it all day, but I mean, look at this block right here. It's so excited. I can't wait for its turn to be talked about, so I think we need to move on. This block right here is the Minecraft 1.21 Crafter. Minecraft's very first auto-crafting block added to the game. It's a new redstone component. It's one of the biggest redstone components to be added to the game in probably literally years. Combine this with the copper bulb, and this is the perfect update for redstoners worldwide. Another kind of neat thing about this brand new workstation block is this is the first block to actually use a crafting table in the recipe for this block. We're going to need a crafting table, a dropper, a whole lot of iron, and a little bit of redstone. This makes this a medium expensive recipe. When you place it down, this block is rotational. The face is always going to face you. And it could be up, that could be to the side, that could be to the other side, whatever. Now sliding on into the crafter right here, we'll find an interactable UI. It's basically a crafting grid, an arrow, and then an output slot right over here. If I say went into this thing and tried to craft things myself, it's not going to work. You can't like manually craft anything inside of the crafter. Instead, if you want to craft anything over here, like let's say, I don't know, staircases or something like that, you're going to need to do it with a little bit of redstone. And so over here, I built myself a handy little clock. It's going to spin around and pulse the crafter. When, oh, whoops, hold on. We got a little clock going over here. It's going to pulse the crafter. When the crafter has signal, the block kind of like lights up on the back over here. But because nothing's inside of the crafter, nothing is going on. Also, inside of the crafter, when it has power, the redstone arrow lights up as well. Up top, I've got that, and in the crafter, I've got these slots locked right there. As soon as I add a hopper to it right here, it's going to funnel blocks into it. When the blocks are filled out and it gets power at the right time, <laughs> just like that, I get staircases. And listen, listen. It's real quiet, but it has a nice sound too. The sound is intentionally quiet in case you have a whole, like, factory of crafters. 
Now, another cool thing about this thing is if I put a container in front of it, it'll craft things and automatically spit those things into the container. No hopper required at all. However, on the other hand, let's say I wanted to maybe string the staircase into something else. Well, you can put a hopper right there and it'll work like that. I did a whole video taking a look at 50 different uses for the crafter. I highly recommend checking that video out maybe next if you want to like learn more about this, all the potential potentials and everything like that with multiple crafters strung together and yeah, cool farms, builds, everything like that. Long story short, this red stony boy over here completely revolutionizes Minecraft farmings. You can actually automatically make blocks now, like kelp. Next up, throwing it back to the trial chambers, a brand new spawner, listen. One of the most beautiful sounds of all time, the break sound too. Oh, it's gorgeous, it's wonderful. However, you probably won't be breaking this thing in survival because it has no block to mine with and it mines insanely slow. It'll take like five minutes or something like that. Instead, with the spawner, you're meant to find it in the wild and take the challenge on. In creative Minecraft, you can use the spawn egg on it to actually like log it with a mob and start a different kind of challenge. Maybe a slightly more in inhumane, unethical challenge. I don't, I don't know the devs wanted me to do the axolotl trial. Now, last but not least, for 1.21, and keep in mind that this is only the first half of 1.21. The first half of 1.20, the half that we saw at Minecraft Live, was like literally just bamboo camels and chisel bookshelf or whatever. The very final thing that we have in 1.21 right now is so mysterious. It's called the Trial Key. You get this from sometimes successfully completing one of those trial spawner trials, or rarely inside of those pots, inside of the structure. The key sure looks like it has the same exact face on the actual key itself that the spawner has right there, but if we try and interact with the spawner, whether it was placed in creative or not, nothing happens. The actual use for the trial chamber key is 100% unknown currently. Ayo, cutting in here while I'm editing this video, this is me, Editals, here to say I, I kind of almost forgot something. We have a couple honorary mentions when it comes to this update and like when it might come to the game. The developers, they have not said if these other experimental features will come to the game in 1.21 or when. Maybe it'll come before, maybe even after, but bundles and villager trade rebalancing. Experimental villager trades and bundles might be in 1.21. But we don't know. Because these two topics are entirely their own thing, especially the villager trade rebalancing, I'm planning on making like a different, more dedicated video a little bit later on. So keep your eyes out for that. When it comes to these villager trades, there's like specifically so much here, like brand new maps, new structure locating functionality, and yeah, they're pretty big. They might be in 1.21. It's not sure. So with all of that, that's gonna mean Minecraft 1.21 right now is gonna look something like this right here. Already, this update, I believe, is bigger than 1.20 at the same point. We got so many beautiful new useful blocks, a lot of cool redstone functionalities, and that wonderfully massive structure as well. That is just about everything inside of Minecraft 1.21 right now. Right now, I'm running a hardcore Minecraft 1.21 series where we check all of this stuff out in survival Minecraft. And for the occasional extra bonus content and world download, tap the join button and consider becoming a member today. Until next time, it's been me, Minecraft's most handsome. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.